Good morning, Nine of Church. I hope this day finds you well, and I pray that you've been able to take some time during this special week to spend with the Lord and considering uh, the things that He would have been going through during those last days. And so today we come to day four of Holy Week, and we ask the question, what might this Wednesday have looked like for the Lord? Interestingly enough, the Bible doesn't tell us what the Lord did on the Wednesday of the Passion Week. Perhaps after those two very busy and adrenaline-filled days in Jerusalem, Jesus and his disciples would have spent the day resting in anticipation of the Passover, which would have been taking place on Thursday. I mentioned yesterday that as we were closing out our discussion that I can't imagine a more troubling, a more tiring day than what the Lord had experienced on Tuesday. But as we all know, what he would go through on Thursday evening and Friday would be far worse. So why wouldn't Jesus have spent that day resting uh, and, and preparing for the Passover? But let me share with you quickly some thoughts uh, with you. I have always wondered about how many times or how many different anointings we have recorded in the Gospels that took place during these last days. John tells us in John chapter 12 that six days before the Passover, which would have been the Friday before Palm Sunday, that they were eating uh, in, uh, in a home. Lazarus was there at the table with Jesus. We know that Martha was working uh, feverishly uh, to provide for the meal and prepare the meal and serve the meal. And we are told that Mary took a very expensive uh, bottle of, or a, a, a container of ointment and oil, uh, and she anointed the feet of Jesus. We are told in John's account that Judas was there, and Judas took exception with this. We know that Judas was all about the money. Now, in Matthew and Mark's account, they each talk about a meal in the home of Simon the leper where an unnamed woman anoints the head of Jesus on this occasion. And in both of these accounts, the disciples, it doesn't mention Judas, but the disciples uh, were bothered by this because of the cost and perhaps the waste issue. You see, it very well could be that the accounts that we have in Matthew and Mark, uh, which took they very well could have taken place on that Tuesday night before Jesus went back to Bethany or after he had gone back to Bethany. And, and the reason I say this is because immediately after, they both share that in Matthew chapter 26, verses 14 through 16, in Mark chapter 14, verses 10 and 11, they give the account of Judas going to the uh, chief priest's home and there he begins to make plans to betray our Lord. So it seems that Judas was not present at that particular meal. Now, many might not agree with me, and I'm not saying dogmatically that there were two different anointings, one on the Friday before Palm Sunday, one on the Tuesday night of Holy Week, but just think about what this would have meant. As Jesus was coming into Jerusalem on that Sunday morning, on that Palm Sunday, he would have smelt like royalty. Not everyone in that day smelled like the precious ointment and that valuable perfume. Not everyone smelled like alabaster. But friends, he was and he still is the king of kings and he deserved to smell like royalty. And then you think about the fact that if he was anointed on that second occasion, what would the significance of that been, uh, had been? Well, think about the fact that when uh, Jesus, after he had died and, and they were scrambling to try to put his body into the tomb before sundown, trying to get all that taken place before the Sabbath began, there would not have been time to do much anointing. But here, this precious woman had anointed her Lord in preparation of that sacred moment that would take place. But whatever it was, or however you see these things, as far as Wednesday goes, as far as this fourth day goes, most likely it was a day of rest, possibly in the home of his dear friends. So, what are the thoughts for us just now? Well, we all need rest, don't we? 
We all need times when we can recharge and reinvigorate. We need time to, uh, to refuel and to just get that rest that we need. And I can think of, a, uh, of nothing better to recharge our batteries than to do the very thing that Mary had done just a few short days before. And that is to sit at the feet of Jesus. So I want to encourage you all today to take some time to sit at the feet of Jesus and let him minister to your soul. God bless you and have a great day.